Welcome to another episode of Hardcat Basics. In this episode, we will show you how to configure and use the Hardcat Web Issue and Return Interface to transfer both assets and stock in the same process. One of the first steps that we have to configure within Hardcat is to set the standard issue and return function that is applied to the user when they log on to Hardcat Web. To do this, we first of all have to go to File, Administration, Security. All roles if you're using a role-based security model in Hardcat. In this instance, I'm going to update the super account to set the issue and return options. Once you have your account open, click on the Options button, then click on Issue and Return. Here we get to set the issue mode and the return mode. In the issue mode, we have three options, ignore source, check source, and strict source. If you select ignore source, you are not able to issue stock from Hardcat Web, as in the ignore source option does not allow you to set a source for the stock to be transferred from. So if you're using stock transfers on Hardcat Web, you have to choose either check source or strict source. In this instance, I'm going to use check source. And the same goes for return mode. If you're returning stock, you have to either select check source, check source once, or strict source. I'm gonna select check source once. Our other option here is the default return destination. So when we select the return function of issue and return, the system will automatically select one of the three options, cost center, location, or person, and here you can also specify a default value that will be pre-populated for you. In this instance, my default is going to be location and my default location will be everything we returned to store Sydney. The second area configuration is in the Hardcat Global Options area. To access this, go to File, Administration, Options. The first thing we have to set is the fault condition. The fault condition is important when issuing assets, as if an asset is set to this particular fault condition that has been selected, the Hardcat web interface will not allow that asset to be transferred. And when we are returning assets, if we scan the fault condition barcode, the asset's maintenance condition will be set to this particular condition. So if I, in this instance, set the condition to be poor, any assets that are set to the maintenance condition of poor will not allow to be transferred by the Hardcat Web issue function. The second area we need to look at is the Hardcat Web options. In here, we have issue and return. From here, we can specify certain attributes. We can specify require asset to have a serial number. If this is ticked on, if the asset does not have a serial number, the system won't let us complete an issue unless the asset serial number has been populated. If you want to spot specify an issue or return date, we can specify that by ticking the display prompt for issue date and display prompt for return date. And the system can auto populate a issue and return date by selecting these options as well. Also, the system allows you to search on serial number. So if you're scanning a barcode that potentially isn't the asset barcode, but you know the serial number information, you could use that instead by using this function here. Alternatively, you could search on the RFID field by having this selected. A final option on the left-hand side here is show image for people. If on the person entity within Hardcat, a image has been associated with that person and make image has been selected. If we are doing a person issue, the person's image will appear as part of the Hardcat web issue functionality. On the top right-hand side, we again have our issue and return modes, as like we saw in the person options area. The issue and return on the person overrides the main options here. So whichever options are specified for issue and return mode for the person are the ones which are used by the person when they log into the Hardcat web, not the issue and return mode set here. If required, the system can also change the asset status on issue and return to a predefined value as specified in the drop-down list. The Hardcat issue and return functionality was programmed to be as free of use of the keyboard and mouse as possible. So what we can do here is specify barcoded values for issue mode, return mode, logout, a default value for issue or return, as well as a barcode value to trigger the default maintenance condition. In this instance, if it is scanned, it will set the asset condition 
to be poor. Now let's have a look at the Hardcat Web Issue and Return Interface in action. First of all, we have to go to our Hardcat Web web address and from there enter our username and password and log in. When this logs in, I have programmed the super account to log in automatically to appear on the issue asset screen or the issue item screen. From here now, we can specify our source as to where the items are coming from. It has entered into this mode because I selected check source from the user's security settings. If I had selected quick, the source option would not be available purely at the destination. Since we're going to be issuing both stock and assets, we have to have the source available. So in this instance, I'm going to scan the barcode for my source location. I'm now going to scan the destination barcode. From here, we can now scan our assets to issue to our new location. Asset 1. Asset 2. Asset 3. Asset 4. I'm now going to also issue some stock. First of all, with stock, we have to select the stock barcode and when it's selected, it'll tell us how many stock units are available to select. In this instance, it's telling us there is 25 units available. So I'm going to scan in 15 and continue. This will issue 15 stock items to this location. I can now scan a different item. As we can see as well, there are 25 of the batteries available as well. So I want five for this transfer. I can now again continue scanning assets if required. And I can continue with this as long or for as many assets that are required to be scanned. Oop, I've already scanned that one. So that is how we issue items, both assets and stock in the same process. From here, we can now print our issue history if required and therefore the person receiving it can sign it and then that can be filed away. If we now want to return items, we can now simply either select the return items button or alternatively we could scan the return barcode. The return barcode will then send us to the return items function. From here again, because we have check source selected as our option for our user, we have both source and destination selected. When we set up the user, we also had the destination preset to be stores. So which means that by default, all items, either assets or stock, will be returned to the store location. So now I can, re I can scan my source, which will be receiving doc, where the assets were issued to. And from here, what it'll give us is a list of all the items, both assets and stock and their quantities, if it's stock, that are associated currently to the receiving dock in Martin Place, Sydney. So now I can start returning the assets. And as you scan the barcodes, the issue items that have been returned list will start to populate. For example, that last asset may have been faulty, so I can now scan the fault barcode which will apply that item as faulty and change the asset's maintenance condition to be poor condition. I can also now return stock as well. So if I want to return 10 of the 15 Duracell 9 volt batteries, I can now scan the barcode for Duracell 9 volt battery, which will again will tell me there's 15 units to transfer, but I only want to take 10 of them. So again, I'll say 10, continue, and then this will then issue 10, and therefore the screen will show me that there's still five remaining. Again, I can do the same thing now for the Veridi Gold AA batteries. Again, the system will show me that there are five available to transfer, and in this instance, I'm going to transfer all five and continue. If this was everything that was needed to be transferred as part of that transfer process, then what we can do now is press our print button 
which will give us a receipt of return, which again the recipient can sign and can be stored for uh, future record keeping purposes. If we are now completed and finished and we do no longer wish to be logged into Hardcat Web, we can simply do one of two things. We can, using the keyboard and mouse, select the logout button, or a lot easier, we can scan our logout barcode, which will log us out of the Hardcat Web application. As always, thank you for watching this episode of Hardcat Basics. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in this episode, or further clarifications, please don't hesitate to contact the Hardcat support team at support at hardcat.com. Or alternatively, you may view our other Hardcat Web videos on our YouTube channel. And always, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.